This is a video tutorial on the command line in the Mac. It's the second in a tutorial series on getting ready to learn Python, specifically for the Mac. The goal of this series is that even if it's your very first time touching a computer, you'll be able to learn the bits and pieces you need to start to program in Python. The rest of these are listed out at the end-to-end -end machine learning school at e2eml.school slash 111. In the previous video, we looked at files and directories using the finder tool. Now we'll look at them another way, with the command line. Being able to navigate through directories to look at files will come in handy all of the time as we create, run, move, and clean up Python programs and the data they read in and their outputs. To get to the command line on the Mac, you can go up to this little magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner and use this spotlight tool and type in terminal. This pulls up a terminal, a command line prompt. This is text only and you can type in commands and you see the output but it's all in text as opposed to the finder which was a window you could drag and click. It's a little bit old school and it might feel a little bit clunky but for what it does it's very effective and it's very useful to be able to know. When you open it it starts automatically here in your home directory. So in my case, it's a directory called Brandon. This prompt here on the left-hand side says, okay, I'm ready for the next command. A really useful command is ls. It lists all of the files and directories within your current directory. So here, when I type ls, I get applications, desktop, documents, downloads, etc. This is the exact same thing we would see if we went to the finder, went to the users directory, found the, my, my user directory, Brandon, and opened it. It has the same list of folders. So this is just a different way to see the same thing. Also, another useful command is sometimes you don't know what directory you're in. You don't remember where you are or how you got there. You can just type PWD, present working directory, and it pulls up the name, the full path to where you are. So here we can see that from the root, from the my computer, from the highest level, we go into the users directory to the Brandon directory. And that's where we are at the moment, that present working directory. It's the same thing that we would see in our finder window, just in a text representation as opposed to a graphical or window representation. When you're typing commands at the command line, they often have special options. So in this case, ls space dash l gives a long listing. So we see the same list of directories, but we see extra information about them. For instance, we can see the permissions, who is allowed to read and write into each of these directories, the D in front of these show that they're all directories. There's no standalone files. We can see who created them, when they were last modified, lots of useful information. Another useful command is clear. Sometimes the terminal window gets a little full. You can just type clear and it wipes it clean. It doesn't erase anything that you've done, but it just starts you over with a new line at the top. Another thing that's really useful to be able to do is to navigate, to move the present working directory from where you are to another place. So we do that with the cd command, change directory. So in this case, an ls shows us that one of the directories in our home directory is called the desktop. Everything on the desktop is just a file or a folder sitting within this directory called desktop. So if we want to get into it and see what's there, we type cd desktop. This is case sensitive, so make sure the D is capitalized. Once you're in the desktop directory, an ls shows all of these other directories that we've already created that we can see visually on the desktop using the graphical interface. Here we can see the same thing as text. It's all the same information, just represented a different way. Again, an ls-l gives us a long listing of these. We can see that they were all created and modified relatively recently. 
We can CD again down to the directory with several files in it. A really useful trick here is when you've typed out part of a file name or part of a directory name and hit the tab key, if it's obvious what it should be, it'll automatically complete the rest of the name. So we could do that to save a little bit of typing. Once we get into the directory with several files in it, another ls shows us exactly what we know should be there. Some images, some movies, a text file, a long listing, shows us more information about it. Now that we're at the level of individual files, we can see how big they are in bytes. So we have this text file that's just 56 bytes, very, very small. Then to compare, we have some image files that go all the way from 40,000 bytes to almost a million bytes to 1.4 million bytes. So getting a little bit bigger. But when we get to movies, that jumps it up to the next level. So we have an almost 6 million byte or 6 megabyte movie and a 14 megabyte movie. Movie files get very large very quickly. These movies are just part of the video for the previous tutorial. They're not even very long, but they get big quickly. Text files, by comparison, are sometimes millions of times smaller. A lot of the Python code that we'll be writing is just a different type of text file. So they're very small files. They don't take up much space at all. With another clear command, we can get back to an empty screen, take a deep breath. A PWD command reminds us of the full path of where we are. So we're in the desktop directory, in the directory with several files in it. If we want to go back up a level, we can go cd dot dot. So instead of digging deeper, that takes us a level back up. And as you can see now, we're in the Brandon desktop directory. An ls reminds us of all of the directories in the desktop. And we can cd directory with other directories in it to dig down. An ls shows us that there is indeed another directory called another directory. We can cd into that one. An ls shows us that there is yet another directory. And when we cd into that one, ls shows us there's one file there, a file with text, .txt. Another useful command is cat. Cat takes the contents of a text file and shows it to you in your terminal. So when we type cat file with text.txt, it puts that text right in there. A file with some text in it about nothing in particular, period. There's actually not a carriage return at the end of that text file, and so it doesn't even add one of those, and then it just tags the prompt onto the end of that. So very literally, just takes the contents of that text file and reproduces it in the terminal. So you can have a quick look at what that file is. So you can see now we're several directories deep from the desktop. If we want to jump up several levels, we can use cd dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash dot dot to jump up three levels at once. And we verify here that yes, we jumped up three levels, we landed back on the desktop. Another option that's useful sometimes is an ls dash capital R. This is a recursive list. So it starts at the top level, in this case the desktop, and lists all of the directories and files within it, and then it digs down. And for each of those directories, lists all of the files and directories within it, and continues to dig down until there are no more directories. You see here, it digs down all the way to the bottom of our directory with other directories in it, another directory, yet another directory. This is useful in showing the whole directory tree at once. Also, if we want to dig down several layers at a time, we can do that by specifying the directory name, forward slash, the next directory name, and so forth, as many layers down as we want to go, and specify that whole path through the directory tree. So here we go down two directories at once. We can also 
create new directories at the command line with the makedir, M-K-D-I-R command. So we navigate back to the desktop, two directories at a time, two levels at a time. M-K-D-I-R, makedir, a directory we created. And we can see, sure enough, it's there. We can change down into it, navigate into it. PWD shows that we're in it. LS shows nothing in it yet. So we just created a whole new directory at the command line. Now, as you can probably guess, we're just scratching the surface of what you can do with the command line, but already we can list what's going on. We can find out what directory we're in and navigate down and up through the directory tree. We can create new directories. This will all come in handy when we create run and move and clean up Python programs and when we have to handle the data they read in and their output.